Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, call our September 22nd meeting, 22nd meeting to order and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, if you don't mind. I'll start us off. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, guys. We'll take a roll call when you're ready. Trustee Gator. Here. Trustee Jerome. Here. Trustee Kenny. Present. Trustee McDonald. Here. Trustee Whitehouse. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson. Here. Mayor Hammond. Here. We got any amendments to the agenda tonight? Me to bring up. No? Okay. Do we have any conflicts of interest we need to be aware of? Yes, Mayor Hammond. Uh, the Sage Meadows second subdivision. Okay. Got that. Anyone else? No. What? Let's move right on into item B, public comment. Anything from the public at this point on a non-agenda item? Individuals wishing to speak on items that are not action items on this evening's agenda will need to raise their hand now. And once called upon, you'll please state your name and address for the record. And individuals will be limited to three minutes during the public comment. So let us know if we have any, please. Mayor Hammond, I don't see any hands raised at this time. All right, we'll move right on into our action items. The first one is a resolution number 34-2020, a utility rate change that we've been talking about for a long time. Tyler, let's hear about it. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor Board Trustees, uh, Tyler Sexton, uh, Assistant Finance Director. So I'm going to be presenting resolution 34-2020. So a little background, uh, the town of Wellington contracted with Woodard and Curran to evaluate water, wastewater, and stormwater rates. Uh, the goal was to develop a realistic projection with the full cost associated with operating the utility. Uh, multiple years of utilities were reviewed to establish a trend in usage, calculate monthly fixed and volumetric charges necessary to provide utility long-term stability. Uh, the town was successful in that we accomplished all three goals and narrowed down to three main factors necessary for the rate change. So the first one was utility rates have remained the same since 2016. Uh, we've seen an increase in water costs over the years and we've had new capital and water treatment loans um, brought on by the town. So these, these, these rates are reflective of that study and um, town staff is recommending resolution number 3422 scenario three. Um, implementation of the rates increased for the water will be time consuming and difficult to manage throughout the transition. Uh, finance staff believes that it would be more efficient to work through the application once than rather repeating the process through the beginning all over again three months later. Uh, it'll be more cost effective to develop it, a mail-in uh, procedure to assist with explaining why the rates are necessary to increase over the time for the citizens. And then the utility billing clerk position is new. Um, she just came on Monday. So um, we're currently doing training and onboarding. And so um, Chris will be the one assisting most of these calls. So that's why uh, staff is recommending scenario three. We believe that that small increase um, most of the system won't really notice it compared to a 100% increase. So we're just trying to cut down on that call volume is kind of our, our plan. And with it only being really a 1% difference throughout the systems, we believe that scenario three would be the best option going forward. Um, so I'm here to take any questions, you guys, or any discussion. Okay, uh, uh, it should be noted that in this resolution, as you stated one more time, there are two scenarios in this resolution. So we're gonna bat around both scenarios right here. That's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna vote on one of them, right? That's yes. how I see it. So, but before we do that, let's go ahead and open it up to board comment. Anyone have final thoughts? I was a little confused, Mr. Sexton, at the 
what the recommendation is because my understanding of scenario three and maybe I have my scenarios mixed up was that scenario three has the rate change are you, are you saying that the rate change at the beginning of January is a small one is that why you're recommending that or correct so I was confused about where the small change was okay yes so to answer that question um, Tracy Gator is that we go from, you know, scenario two is a 35 to, I believe, a 63 come January. This one would be a $60 in October to a 61, I believe it's 73 or something. So it'd be a very small, less than 3% increase okay. compared to 100%. Okay, thank you. I was just a little confused as to where that small change is. I appreciate you clarifying that. Anyone else? Yes. Trustee Kenny. Hi. Um... I am currently in favor of option number two, which eases the burden of this increase by increasing it gradually over time, uh, meaning that there will be an increase in October, potentially, and then again at the end of the year. Um, the reason why I have this opinion is because when I'm speaking with the community and I'm hearing testimony from folks who represent and serve at the food bank. Um, when I'm talking to fellow parents of kids who are struggling right now with kids at home and increased childcare costs and uncertainty for the future, I do not believe that the, the increase should all fall at this moment. I think that is not fair. Um, we already do have some accounts that are um, past due. I know that we have mentioned that we're not churning off services for some of these people, um, but they might already be behind. So increasing that amount right now also seems unfair um, and not with the best interests of our community. With both of the models at hand, they both accomplish the requirement for bringing the water fund to the amount where it needs to be contractually. They both um, accomplish the exact same thing, but one of them offers an easier transition for our community. So why not choose the easier transition for our community, even if it might involve more phone calls, than doing what might be more difficult for our community if they both have the same result and benefit to the water fund. Those are my points. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, okay. I did you know, the share. resolution, Tyler, Trustee Gator, do you have something to add? I did, and uh, similar points Here. to what Trustee Kinney did share, a lot of the um, questions and comments that I've had from people are, um, concerns about how to pay for the increase and what the effect that's going to have on the rates. And I would fall in the line. I know the concerns I had with the scenario one that we did not pursue was just that there, it, it waited to make any change until next year. And I think I like with scenario two, I, I do understand that there is going to be more challenges for town staff, um, especially with having someone new. But in this sense where to me, this is a failing on the part of the board and the town staff in years past that we're at this point, um, that I think if there's a portion where we can shoulder a little bit more of a burden, so not as much of that has to fall on the citizens at this moment, it does allow us to spread that out. I would prefer to see us take on a little bit of that burden to just ease that as much, if we can. So that's kind of where I would stand. So I would prefer to do the scenario too, even if it does mean more work on our side, um, because it does give us the ability to help get people a little bit farther before we do have that larger increase. Okay, thank you for that. Anyone else? Yeah, I just want to remind the board that uh, option two may have a lower start, but it's only for three months, and then it would have a higher payment next year over option three. Um, so it's just whether you want to pay more next year or pay slightly less for three months this year. Fair statement. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I myself understand that we are going to 
eventually get to the curve here. Uh, I don't mind, you know, I, I kind of tend to agree with her. Trustee Gator, Trustee Kenny on this one myself, that I'd like to e ease the pain as much as possible. We're dumping an awful lot on a lot of people. You know, it may not seem like it's a big deal, but I think that some people will benefit from that and um, the blow will come when it comes. Uh, uh, what, one point to Trustee Gators now, now, you know, it wasn't always a failure, Trustee Gators. It was rather quickly. And uh, as, as far as our cost of water, that was uh, a, a rather quick uh, increase that we had to incur here. And uh, we've been um, after a new water treatment plant for some time now, and we made the best decision that we could make for the future of this town. And I think that we have a good system going forward. I've got high confidence in what we got forward. And uh, so I, I'd like to not take uh, issue with that. I just wanted to say that I think that we're doing a, a decent job at trying to keep up with this. And once we get past these hurdles, we'll have this tiger by the tail at this point. Um, okay, so if, that, if no one else has any more comments, I'd like to turn this over to the public for some input. If attendees would like to speak at this time, if you could raise your hand and we will allow you to speak to the board. Mayor Hammond, I see no hands raised at this time. Okay, we'll bring it back to the board. So how do we go about voting on this? Does somebody want to kind of guide us through this a little bit. Do you just want to just bring up scenario three and see who votes for it? And then I guess the remaining goes to very, you know, scenario two, who wants to weigh in on that? Based on the general, this is Brad March, based on the nature of your question, your honor, or I'm uh, <laughs> mayor, I think you just need to request that somebody make a motion be that scenario two or three, um, and if you okay. if you receive a second, then you vote on that. So so, and if the first if the first scenario fails, then is it automatic for the second scenario? No, you need a motion on the second scenario. Okay, that's what I need to know. All right. That being said, can I get a motion to um, approve the water rate increase resolution thirty four twenty twenty scenario three? So move. I'll second. Let's take a roll call. Trustee Gator. No. Trustee Jerome. Yes. Trustee Kenny. No. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Whitehouse. No. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson. Yes. Mayor Hammond? No. Okay, we'll move on. The next one. Can I get a motion to entertain resolution number dash 34 2020? Scenario number two, water rate increase. So move. Move. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Gator? Yes. Trustee Jerome? Yes. Trustee Kenny? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Trustee Whitehouse? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson? Yes. Mayor Hammond? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Tyler. Item two. This is a preliminary plan for Sage Meadows, a second subdivision. This is going to be by Cody Bird. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Trustees. Uh, Cody Bird, Planning Director. Um, the item that I'm presenting to you tonight is, as the Mayor said, a preliminary plat. Uh, it's for Sage Meadows Second Subdivision. This is uh, approximately 36 acres of land uh, located on the east side of Highway 1 um, and about a half mile uh, south of Jefferson Avenue and a half mile north of GW Bush Avenue. Um, the property, as I mentioned, is about 36 acres. It's uh, currently zoned as R2, residential single family. Um, as part of this uh, application, 
uh, what staff encouraged the, the developer to do um, was to consider transitioning some of the uh, existing single family zone development to um, allow for larger lot commercial subdivision, um, which would be a transitional area between what the town anticipates to be a commercial area immediately north of this site. Um, so they've proposed two large commercial tracks that could be used for commercial purposes, uh, could also be used for public or civic uses. And as part of this preliminary plat, we've also encouraged the developer to uh, pursue a planned unit development zoning request um, that would facilitate these different types of uses. Um, and we'd also um, encouraged using some attached single family units like fourplexes um, to help transition from the commercial lots that are proposed on this plat down to the existing single family detached housing. Um, that's why you see the variety of lot sizes. Um, as part of that proposal, the plan unit development request is something the applicant intends to pursue, um, and that would be facilitated at the same time as a final plat. Um, so we would bring that back to the, to the board for a public hearing in the future. Uh, but we wanted to start this preliminary plat process um, and at least get you know, far enough guidance to understand from our, our board if that would be a realistic scenario. Um, we did take this to the Planning Commission on September 14th. And the Planning Commission, uh, after holding the required public hearing, um, there was no public testimony presented, uh, but the public hearing was held. And following that, the Planning Commission did recommend approval. Uh, the approval was subject to some of the staff comments, which are fairly minimal at this point. Um, this applicant has been working very closely with town staff uh, to help achieve um, this kind of desired land use scenario. Uh, transitioning from uh, the future commercial area down to the existing single family homes in Sage Meadows subdivision. Um, so staff's been very pleased with the applicants willingness to work with us um, to achieve this, this uh, vision for the town. Um, they've been very helpful in, in putting forth the effort to, to achieve this. Um, a couple of things I wanted to highlight and the applicant um, and his agents are available tonight to answer questions. Um, I wanted to highlight just a couple of, of uh, things from this particular application. Um, the zoning and the, and the land use, uh, as I just described. I also wanted to highlight the, the, what staff has proposed for the parks and open space. Um, at this point in the preliminary plat process, um, the applicant was beginning to, to provide the required park dedication uh, for the town's codes. And staff actually encouraged them to, rather than provide another park uh, in close proximity to the existing viewpoint park, we actually asked the applicant if they would uh, go ahead and provide the fee in lieu of land dedication for parks um, and provide trail connectivity to get uh, homeowners to the existing viewpoint park. Um, and the applicant agreed that that was uh, something they'd be willing to do. So what you'll see on the plat, uh, you've got a couple of large tracks um, and there was a colored rendering uh, in your packet as well showing trail and kind of a preliminary landscape layout connecting the, the green space and the open spaces to Viewpoint Park um, for this, this uh, residential development. Um, as part of that proposal, the town taking the fee in lieu uh, instead of a, a brand new park, it reduces the town's maintenance responsibilities for yet another park in close proximity to our existing community park and we'd have the funds available for future land purchases to acquire parks for like a regional park um, or trail connections or other, other features that are needed for the town and other areas. Um, so that was staff's proposal. And so far the developers uh, agreed to do that. We will take that to the parks advisory board for their comment as well. And we'll bring that back at the final plat. Um, and then the other key thing I wanted to, to highlight um, was the, uh, well, actually two more things, a high level, and then of course I'll stand for any questions. Um, the other high level was, was access to the site. Um, all of the residential uh, development, the detached and the attached uh, single family dwellings would have access via their internal uh, public roadways. The two commercial lots, we would not allow to have any direct access onto Highway 1. Instead, what we're proposing is a, a joint access easement that could become future public right of way on the north side of that, um, that would serve as a, a commercial entrance onto Highway 1 for these two lots, 
as well as the future commercial that's anticipated to the north of this. Um, so that one entrance is desirable for CDOT so they don't have multiple driveways, multiple entrances, um, and it really facilitates better land use planning to, to coordinate that effort um, from multiple de uh, developments and with CDOT to reach everyone's uh, best intended outcomes. Um, so that single point of access is what's proposed on the north side of track E. Um, and then the other uh, important consideration for this uh, development, uh, it is, uh, it will be a part of a well system, so a non-pot irrigation system for this uh, entire subdivision. Um, so they would not be utilizing any town treated water for outdoor irrigation. Uh, the developer has indicated that they'll extend the non-pot system from the existing Sage Meadow subdivision, which is, was accounted for, um, and we would adjust their uh, raw water uh, contribution requirements to just the indoor demand only portion of our raw water dedication. Um, I would stand for any questions you have of staff. Uh, Darren Roberson is the applicant and is also available to share any additional information or answer questions. And of course, I wanted to remind the board that we do have a public hearing on this item tonight. So you'll wanna follow your public hearing procedures um, and staff can provide any guidance necessary to facilitate that process. Okay, thank you very much for that presentation, Cody. Uh, I wanted to say a couple things real quick. I really like this uh, plat layout that you and um, Mr. Roberson came up. I really thought it was a well comprehensive thought out trying to hit all the points and concerns that we've been trying to do. It's one of the first ones that I think that I've seen where you encompass the commercial look, you've weighed the non-pot versus potable water, you've also looked at the trail connectivity to another access point on a park rather than using a whole new one. Uh, I, I, really, uh, I really like the approach and the, whole, the, the way it looks on the surface. So I was pleased to see that. One concern I might have is the only single access to the entire subdivision. I don't know if that's a concern or not. But anyway, that was my two points or three points. I'm gonna turn it over to the board at this time. Uh, this is Trusty Whitehouse. I did have a couple of questions uh, for Mr. Bird. Uh, the commercial uh, parcels, are those gonna be on a non-pot? system i think the, there was discussion about extending that over to that is that part of this yeah great question so the entire land that's proposed as part of this preliminary plat has the capacity to be on the existing non-pot system that's currently in sage meadow subdivision um, it might be a little bit tricky and we'll talk with the developer about how to facilitate that connection uh, typically, the, we would want the single family homes and the attached single family to be part of the HOA for the subdivision. Um, we don't necessarily, it's, it's not usually advantageous to include commercial properties in an HOA, uh, but we would like to ensure that there is a connection to the non-pot system for those two commercial tracks. Um, so I will discuss that further with the developer to make sure we can facilitate that. Okay, the second question I had, and I think I've mentioned this to you before, is on page 11 under sidewalks, it's still, I guess this is from the narrative, suggests that the sidewalks are gonna be three foot 10 inches. Has that issue been addressed? Because that's non-standard to town code. Yeah, great question, Mr. Whitehouse. Um, I appreciate you pointing that out. Um, in the project narrative, there's a section um, that it's describing the, the sidewalks for this, for this proposed subdivision and identifies that sidewalks might range anywhere from three feet to 10 feet. Um, and staff's comment in the staff report was that we would like all the sidewalks to comply with town standards unless the developer is increasing the width of sidewalks or trails, um, in which case we would like to see a minimum of five feet width for sidewalks. Um, the, the town's standard detail for an attached sidewalk is four and a half feet with a, a six inch transition down to a curb and gutter uh, monolithic pour. Um, since that's our standard, we would, we would accept that for the attached walks, but for any detached walks or uh, park and trail space, we would want that to be a minimum of five feet. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Thank you. Other board members? Hi, Rebecca Kenny here. So. I am also um, impressed and glad that we are considering you know, a diverse look at density for some of these, um, for this as well. 
And then I also am really happy to see that, you know, we're flexing the, the planning skills and staffing. Um, so I'm really happy to see these great ideas come and be considered before they are hitting the board. Um, and I think that's fantastic. So I'm really happy with the staff. So I appreciate all that consideration and, and, and proactive thought for, for our town. Thank you. No one else? I did have a couple of okay, questions. Okay, Mr. Roberson, go ahead, trustee. So, uh, Mr. Bird, I did have a question. I noticed in here that the um, the areas for the um, commercial, it sounds like it's split up, Can be it can be commercial or public use or kind of whatever. I know that's been a conversation that we've had because there have been challenges where we've had, for just to use an example, if we've had churches trying to find land and it's been an issue because of zoning and then also it's been an issue because of the town not wanting to give up um, prime commercial property mm -hmm. and then the the concern that i have is with this being right on highway one it appears that this land would kind of fit that ideal commercial property and then i also did see a note that it does appear that there's already a desire from the uh, fire protection district to utilize some of that land for a fire station so my concern is is are we actually going to have opportunity for things other than just the fire district or commercial property to utilize this, because that was part of the whole point of setting this land aside. Yeah, so so good questions, uh, Trustee Gator. Um, the way we've approached this, um, you know, working with the developer, one of the concerns was no deal is done until the deal is struck. And so we were trying to provide maximum flexibility for this property, for these two commercial properties. Um, the, from a planning standpoint, really what we're trying to accomplish is um, we expect the, the parcel north of this to develop commercially at some point in the future. And we wanted to be able to step down from that higher intensity land use back down to the existing single family in Sage Meadows subdivision. And so this will allow a, a variety of uses um, that would help accomplish that, whether it's, you know, there is, has been interest for a future fire station um, that would be a good transitional use between commercial and single family, um, as would a church, as it could be other commercial opportunities if those became available. Um, and even it could be an opportunity for, for future multifamily if there are no commercial or public civic uses that, that are interested in this parcel. Um, so it really, we've tried to lay it out to provide the maximum flexibility um, and still accomplish the goal of stepping down from a higher intensity commercial use down to a single family use. Um, point well taken um, that there there has been a, a lack of land availability um, for some of our, our civic and church uses in the, in the town. Um, that's obviously been a desire of town staff to, to help facilitate that role. Um, we acknowledge that this is a great location um, for some of those uses, but it's not the biggest site. Um, it's probably only going to accommodate one or two of those types of uses. Um, so we're going to continue at a staff level to be proactive and look for ways to facilitate those those future opportunities. Okay, and that was just my concern is that we just keep in mind when we're putting things out when we have it slated for either commercial or public use, it does kind of put us in this position where if we're saying, well, we need more commercial here, there's this desire to put commercial there instead of non-tax generating versus having something that's specifically set aside for be it a school, be it a church, be it, the fire dis be it for the fire district. I think it would be great, to, I know, talking to the fire chief to have land outside of the town for them to be able to respond in. So I think it's a great place for it to go. I just want to make sure that we're considering this in our planning process, that we're not putting ourselves in a situation we've been in the past where we're saying, well, this is the only commercial area that we have. We don't want to give it to a non-tax generating. Um, so we need, I just, if we can keep that in mind moving forward. And then the other question I had is that it was good to hear this is going to be on a non-pot system, but what is the impact that we're looking at um, from a utility standpoint? Obviously, we're at least another two to four years out from our water treatment plant being up and running. And depending on how things go with wastewater, we're near capacity with wastewater as well. What are we looking at in terms of the impact that this is gonna have on our already um, over, over capacity utilities? Yeah, great questions again, trustee. 
Um, so staff has, has taken a very close look at all of our uh, developments to make sure that we're going to be continuing to operate within our existing capacities until we have some of these expansion projects up and running. Um, we are, the town has historically been growing at about a 6% uh, historic growth rate. That would put us in, under a little bit of pressure uh, in the coming years as some of our projects are coming online. Um, we are evaluating options for uh, managing that growth rate to a little bit less than that 6%. Um, and we'll be working with all of our development uh, partners in the community to make sure that we stay within our sustainable uh, infrastructure uh, guidelines. Um, so something to keep in mind, the, the planning process is, is really the, the process of identifying the legal tracks, the, the road dedications, the, the legal descriptions for lot and block. Um, it's a legal document that establishes the property boundaries for each of these parcels. Um, the actual construction of those in physical improvements would have to take place um, before any permits would be issued for, for construction. And then you've got some time after that before those units are actually occupied and you see that water demand. Um, so we're going to be working very closely on all of our future subdivisions here um, to make sure that the timing is right, that we can stay within our capacities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, is Mr. Roberson on tonight? Yeah, I'm here with uh, Tom Dugan, Shane Ritchie, and myself, Darren Roberson. Darren, would you like to say anything? Um, I'll leave it. Uh, I mean, obviously, any questions I can answer, but also on the commercial for the non pot system. It'd be simple to keep it out of the HOA and we'll just put a metered system going into those two commercial areas. So they will have access to the non pot system too, which I think is key. And um, yeah, any questions at all that anybody has for me or Tom, um, yeah. we're, we're free to discuss. Okay. Uh, I think I got it. Uh, does anybody have a direct question for uh, Mr. Roberson? I don't have any questions for Mr. Roberson, but I just breaking up a little bit. That's all. Is that better? I'll be patient. Thank you. I just wanted to bit. thank Mr. Roberson for peeling out part of his residential plan to allow for some commercial development. So I think that between uh, Mr. Bird and Mr. Roberson, they both worked really hard to make sure that there was that perfect blend. And then Cody's um, forward thinking about doing the overlay to allow for public use or churches and that sort of thing, I thought was brilliant. So thank you so much for keeping in mind the trail system for the Perks Advisory Board and allowing them some flexibility. Because that is a struggle, dealing with the um, vandalism and upkeep of that plastic play equipment. So I think diversifying our trail system and looking at different types of play and letting them be, you know, hands-on and, and involved in those larger projects is great. So I want to just commend Mr. Bird and um, Sage Homes for all of their hard work to really make this a great cooperative project for the community. Okay, thank you, Trustee McDonald. Anyone else? For Darren. Um, let me comment that, uh, I mean, hopefully you guys see we're not building the, the improvements anymore where it's just all straight streets. It's a, it's a team effort. It's just not me and, and it's a team effort with all of us giving input on how we lay out the streets and open space and, and hopefully it's bringing you guys some great products to the community. Well, Darren, I, I, like I said, I'll reiterate what Trustee McDonald said, I, I think it's one of the better approaches I've seen in the whole thing and encompassing everything that we're trying to do as a team. So I really appreciate the effort and I think it's going to go great. Any other board members for comment? Four Colts Farms. Okay, so if that being said, I'd like to turn it over to the public at this time.
Mayor Hammond, I see no hands raised at this time. We'll bring it back to the board. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the preliminary plan for the Sage Meadows Second Subdivision? So moved. Second. You need a second? Second from Rebecca. Trustee Kenny second it. Okay, we'll take a roll call, please. Trustee Gator? Yes. Trustee Jerome? Yes. Trustee Kenny? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Abstain. Trustee Whitehouse? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson? Abstain. Mayor Hammond? Yes. Thank you, Darren. Appreciate the work you're doing for us. And everybody else that was involved, Cody and team and staff. Uh, let's move on. Item three, this is the Main Street's Memorandum of Understanding and 2021 Budget Update. Callie, you got something for us? Uh, good evening, uh, Board of Trustees. Yes, Callie Cooper here, Executive Director of the Wellington Main Street Program. And I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about tonight is our uh, 2021 budget. Um, a few things uh, to consider as I show you. Um, our total municipal funding request for 2021 is 77500 This includes 75000 in direct municipal funding and 2500 for our annual color flower planner support. Um, as we have changed our program area, it no longer includes the uh, east side of 6th Street. And so um, last year, the trustees did vote to um, help us uh, support that program uh, outside of our program area. Um, if you take a look at our budget, we did take a very conservative approach this year. Um, we left off fundraising productions and project costs that we typically would include. And that is due to our ongoing COVID-19 uh, considerations. Um, we wanted to make sure that when you looked at our budget this year, we were keeping it as minimal as possible. We don't want to uh, <laughs> uh, prematurely anticipate any funding that is coming in. So um, our 2021 project cost estimations are listed separately under our budget and the Main Street program will work very hard in the upcoming year to uh, complete our 2021 work plan events and projects as those funds become available to us. Um, so here's just a very <laughs> um, in depth, a more in-depth look. Um, as you can see, how this looks a little different than 2019 is we did leave off of, we did leave off those, um, uh, I'm sorry, sponsorships and um, outside revenue. And so what you're seeing here is really just the base costs of what it will take for us to uh, run the program next year. Um, also on top of our program uh, budget for 2021, um, I did want to let you guys know that the Wellington Main Street program has submitted our application for graduate status with Colorado Main Street. Uh, this will probably take us about four to six weeks. We're hoping to hear by uh, middle to end of October. Um, the approval of our status change, this is the really great news part, is that will result in an increase of our annual mini grant dollars from $5,000 a year to $10,000 a year. And that is effective immediately. Um, so we have been awarded a five-year contract. So from 2020 to fiscal year 2020 to 2025, uh, we will be guaranteed those mini grant funds. So um, that will also allow us to borrow against those funds. So we could potentially uh, take out three years at a time. So $30,000 worth um, as a graduate level program, or we can also bank those funds year to year. 
So if we decided to not use them in the upcoming year, that would give us $20,000 the next year. And uh, the really great thing about that is as we head into next year, looking at our downtown master plan, that might allow us to retain some of those funds and not have to use them for a project and allow us to collect more funds together to do a larger project. Um, and actually I'll pause here to see if there's any questions about the budget before I move on. Board members, any questions? Okay. Um, so the last piece is- Looks pretty um, comprehensive to me. <laughs> and we tried, like I said, um, it was important for us for you guys to see what all of our base costs were. And um, also to show you, we have some really great projects for next year. And in order to accomplish all of those projects, it'll cost us roughly $19,000. So that means that's what we will have to raise as a program to do all of the projects that we want to do. Um, and so, like I said, we will do those projects as those funds become available. Um, okay. So the last piece that I'm coming up on is um, a proposed MOU. Um, this was a recommendation made by our DOLA representatives at the end of last year. Um, and really it was to formalize the verbiage on deliverables from the Main Street program to the town. And this would be signed on an annual basis along with our budget approval through the town of Wellington. Um, and some things I just wanna highlight in that are um, uh, just some of the, like I said, this really outlines all of the specific deliverables so that we would assist the town of Wellington and board of trustees with downtown redevelopment projects that are agreed upon between the two organizations. Um, that we would maintain an inventory and database of occupied and vacant properties that we would help to create awareness of the downtown community through promotion of events, social media, quarterly articles, and other media platforms, uh, communicate grant funding, and pursue initiatives and opportunities to enhance the, peer, the appearance of Main Street's program area. So really this is things that we've already been doing and the relationship that we've already had with the town. This is just our formalized version of that, which in the past we have not had. Um, and then there also is um, a piece in here about the compensation, which would change year to year, and um, our reporting as well, which as you guys know, I typically do a quarterly report um, so that you guys can see where we're at budget-wise and the projects that we have going on an ongoing basis. So any questions about any of this? <laughs> Uh, board members, it's your turn. Any any questions for Kelly? Kelly, I really appreciate all of the. Why don't we take our screen? Oh, I really appreciate all of the contributions and hard work that the Main Street Group has put in. When it was originally founded, part of the um, pilot was is that there would be a plan eventually in, in place for you to be. Um, self-sufficient financially. Um, I certainly don't mind continuing to um, support this program. I'm just curious if there's any plans for the Main Street Group to work towards being self-sustaining. I understand that with COVID and everything, it's kind of the huge hiccup in that, but if that wasn't happening, what would be your plan for that? Absolutely. So um, uh, yes, this year was supposed to be a very pivotal year for us to move towards that um, financial independence. And uh, a lot of those projects and uh, events obviously were um, not, they did not happen this year. So my goal for the next year, uh, part of that is that graduate program status. So giving us that, that dollar flexibility over the next five years, that will be huge for us as far as our project costs. And then we are also starting some other larger events that should be larger revenue producers. So um, the potential of a farmer's market, um, the poten um, potentially doing additional events 
and taking a really close look at direct uh, contribution and support. So corporate sponsorship directly to our organization and really take advantage of the fact that we are a nonprofit organization and a lot of those fees, a lot of those contributions are tax deductible. So that is a big consideration for our board of directors moving forward and something um, that our financial sustainability committee has shifted in and uh, making sure that that is a goal that we are working towards. Thank you so much for all that you do and for keeping your eye on the ball, even with all this COVID stuff. I'm really excited for you guys to bring back all your awesome support for community events. So thank you for all of your hard work and support to the COVID incident. I worked with you directly through the incident command system and the support that Main Street brought to our local business community was above and beyond anything that I've seen from any other organization um, in the area. So thank you so much for your dedication and your hard work and everything that you put into the Main Street program because it, it really does make a difference. So thank you for all of your hard work. Thank you. Other trustees? Anything else? Mr. Mayor, if I might, um, Brad Marge, town attorney. Um, one of the things I would suggest be added to the Main Street MOU is that you include a provision that provides that the $75,000 is subject to appropriation. Um, I, I would assume the board intends to appropriate it, but it gets into the next fiscal year and therefore you can't do this without appropriating it. And so I, I, if, if, you, if you're comfortable with it, I'd make, like to make that change. I also, just by way of clarification, and it may not matter, but I would note that the agreement is terminable on 90 days notice. Um, is that just for the board's um, approval or, or, or you ought to explain how you're gonna do this? I don't know if that $75,000 is going to be allocated as of January 1st and turned over, or if that's a monthly disbursement and that does make a difference relative to paragraph six. And that's a Kelly that's um. response. Yeah, so typically, um, and, and forgive me, this is my first year through, uh, through this actual process, but typically what happens is we present our, 20, our next year budget to the Board of Trustees, and then that is taken into consideration as you guys work through your budget cycle for 2021, and this becomes effective as of January. Um, so we try to get this into you guys earlier so that um, you have those numbers and you can see where those dollars will be spent and before you go into your, your or as you are in the midst of your uh, budget cycle. And right, thanks for pointing that out, Brad. Uh, anyone else? I think to answer Mr. March's question, I believe from my understanding the MOUs, the funds are allocated quarterly to the Main Street program. Um, so they would pre present an invoice to the town uh, on a quarterly basis. So that would match up well with the 90 days. If for whatever reason, either end chose to terminate that, then just whatever that period would be. So um, it might be budgeted for the whole year, but it is distributed quarterly. And we probably, if that's the case, it probably ought to be reflected in the agreement together with the appropriation clause. I believe it is. So if you look in section three, where it says compensation, um, the town may, agrees to pay Main Street's an annual fee of not less than 75000 Main Street shall submit an invoice each quarter and the funds shall be paid quarterly. Yeah. Do we need enough. more than that or is that well, enough? I would just, and, and maybe again, as long as the board understands that if it's terminated, then that would have an impact on the compensation and maybe this is sufficient, just the discussion that we're having here is sufficient. Um, and so at that point, if the board is comfortable with that, I would just suggest that you that you include an appropriation clause, and I can provide that. Okay. So anyone else? That was good. I just appreciate all the stuff, all the things that Main Streets has been doing um, to echo the other trustees, especially through COVID nineteen. It's been amazing to see the support you guys have had for our local businesses and talking to the business owners and the impact it's had on them. It's been fantastic. So I'm very excited that we have the opportunity to work with you guys again for this next year. Thank you. Other board members? Okay, uh, Kelly, I, I, I think I'll just echo real quickly. Um, other trustees, uh, I can't tell you how important 
you, you and your organization were during this whole COVID thing, but also just, you know, keeping up the pressure with our businesses and making the connection that we need to know of and making things happen. And we saw results. They're out there. So we did well. You did well. The whole thing did well. I'm pretty pleased with it. So thank you very much. Keep it up. Uh, if there's no other comments, I'd like to take it to the public. Mr. Mayor, I see no hands raised at this time. Okay, we'll bring it back to the board for a motion to approve Main Street's program memorandum of understanding on the 2021 budget update. I think with the uh, comments that were re uh, brought up uh, as far as the appropriations, can I get a motion to approve? Uh, point of information, are we, is this yes. an action item or just a presentation? I think we're approving a budget. I think we're approving the memorandum of understanding. Someone, is that correct, Mr. Brad, I, 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 my read would be you are approving the memorandum of understanding, which which uh, um, is fine, subject again to the appropriations clause, as long as the board's comfortable with that. Might I make a suggestion? I mean, could we get can we get this finalized? I mean, we are in what September twenty second. I mean. Would it be appropriate to get the final agreement with the tweaks available? It seems like it seems like most people are willing to go ahead with this. It seems very reasonable. It is, but is there any urgency to do it tonight, or can we clean up the language a little bit and uh, bring it back in a couple of weeks? I don't know what our calendar looks like going forward. You could certainly postpone it to a date, a definite date, um, and the staff could bring that back to you with an appropriations clause, uh, a motion to. Um, postpone is, is debatable, but does not have to be referred to the public if they understand the rule. I'm personally comfortable with moving forward with the consideration for the appropriations boss. I'm good either way. Ms. Cooper, does this have any impact on Main Streets if this gets delayed a couple of weeks? Is there any negative impact to you guys? Um, it does not. Like I said, the, the budget we anticipated not being approved uh, until December with the town's budget cycle. Um, the memorandum of understanding really just is co coinciding with that budget approval. Uh, so if that if that ends up taking, you know, until the end of the year, even th that's fine. They go hand in hand. Okay. I I'm fine with approving it with the adjustments per the town attorney. But again, I will defer to whatever direction the board wants to go on this. Well, then uh, anyone else got some comments on this? Because I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward with the uh, advice of the town attorney that we have to add this language in there. But, uh, you know, if we want to just, if we got time and you want to send it back and get it cleaned up and bring it back and do it, uh, 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 you know, in a clean manner, I'm fine with that. So, someone make a motion. I, approve, uh, I move that we approve the MOU with an additional appropriations clause. Second. Let's take a roll call. Trustee Gator. Yes. Trustee Jerome. Yes. Trustee Kenny. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Whitehouse. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson. Yes. Mayor Hammond. Yes. Thank you, Trustee Whitehouse, for bringing up those uh, points. So appreciate that. Thank you again, Kelly. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. You bet. All right. So we're going to move on to item four. This is an annexation agreement and development agreement for the Puna School District subdivision. Cody. Uh, good evening again. Cody Bird, uh, planning director. Um, I apologize. There must have been an error in the putting the packet together. I actually prepared a cover uh, report for this, and it didn't appear to end up in the final packet, at least not in the version that I saw. Um, but... I'll give, you, give it to you real simply. It's very similar to what you've seen in the past. Um, the school district annexation and development agreement uh, topic has been before the board a couple of times. Um, what we've been doing is, is uh, staff is continuing to negotiate with school district staff on a couple of remaining items. Uh, the staff report has looked like uh, basically the same. Um, we've, we heard this um, 
at the last board meeting. Uh, it was tabled to tonight uh, for further, further consideration and further negotiation. Um, the remaining outstanding items that the town staff is negotiating with school district staff uh, is irrigation or not irrigation of an outdoor uh, learning park or courtyard. Um, we're discussing how many shares the school district would, uh, water shares the school district would like to contribute to satisfy their raw water dedication requirements. Um, and we're continuing to have discussions about the offsite road improvements for Highway 1 and County Road 9, County Road 62E. Um, we've had a couple of good conversations with school district staff. They're waiting on the results of an executive session tonight with their board uh, before they can proceed with some of their comments. Um, we have a meeting set up with them for this Thursday to continue those conversations. Um, so we're making good headway. Um, but again, this has been um, the proposed recommendation in the past. Uh, staff is recommending that this item be tabled until the, the next board meeting to allow those discussions to happen. Um, the next board meeting uh, would be October 13th. Um, and so staff's recommendation is to table the annexation agreement and development agreement to the October 13th uh, Board of Trustees meeting. I'm happy. Okay. Does anyone need to ask a quick question, Cody? Uh, the only question, I just it, it sounds like you're making progress on some of the outstanding issues. And I think that's, you know, I don't think we need to go into any details on that, but I appreciate you and Bob and everyone else's uh, dedication to uh, getting this done. I know, I know everybody wants to see it done. Absolutely. Any other quick comments? Okay. Uh, well, that being said, this, uh, Let's just entertain a motion to table this uh, annexation development agreement till the next October 13th. I make a motion we uh, <laughs> table to a date certain or uh, the Pooter School District uh, annexation till our October, is it 15th? Is that correct? Meeting? 13th. 13th. I stand corrected. Thank you. Second. Okay. Take a roll call. Trustee Gator. Yes. Trustee Jerome. Yes. Trustee Kenny. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Whitehouse. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knudsen. Yes. Mayor Hammond. Yes. Hey, Cody, keep it up. Look forward to hearing what we come back with. Okay, we're going to move on. Item five, uh, proposed ordinance, an ordinance concerning regulation of retail medical marijuana stores in the town of Wagner. Brad, fill us in on it. Um, Mr. Mayor, if I might, uh, this probably is applicable to items five through nine, actually. Uh, I can right. provide the board with a general overview. It's going to be my suggestion that the matter be uh, tabled until October 13th for reasons I'll get into. Um, I, as I indicated in conjunction with the prior issue, um, I, I think that under Bob's rules is uh, a debatable motion but does not require public uh, comment. Um, by way of just a general overview, um, as we told the board, uh, as, as I told the board at the last meeting, there was a protest hearing that was scheduled for last Wednesday. Uh, on Friday, September 18th, an action was filed in the district court requesting a declaratory judgment. What a declaratory judgment is, is it's a proceeding by which the district court can look at certain questions and provide answers. That's what was um, um, requested, that declaratory action uh, contained two components. The first was a preliminary injunction hearing, and the court has set that preliminary injunction hearing for tomorrow afternoon. Um, the relief requested in conjunction with the preliminary injunction hearing is to prohibit the county clerk from printing ballots um, without the Wellington initiatives for the November 3rd election. They further, if that is an alternative to that, they would requ they request that the court 
uh, declare that Wellington should be required, the Wellington clerk should be required uh, to provide um, Wellington voters with independent mail ballots for the November 11th or November uh, 3rd election. Um, as, as the court, as the board has been advised, um, that's problematic uh, in light of um, 3110-108 that says that Wellington at least cannot schedule election unless it's done so 60 days prior to the election and that horse has left the barn. We can't schedule an election for November 3rd. Um, I don't know how the court will react to the requirement that the um, county um, include that on the November 3rd election. That'll be determined tomorrow. Um, the dates specifically, and I tried to provide a better outline for board members um, at pages 131 to 133 of the uh, agenda uh, in my resolution, just kind of outlining, and, and I cited the statutory language uh, for the issues uh, in question uh, directly, so you can take a look at what those are. Um, but um, relative to that action, I think we need to turn out what happens on the on the action, or we need to determine what happens on the action filed on on September 18th, in conjunction with the protest decision. The uh, hearing officer was required to issue a ruling. Uh, at the uh, um, at, at, from the Wednesday action within five days. She issued that ruling over the date of September 20th, which was a Sunday. It was circulated the morning of September 21st. The hearing officer in, in her determination found that the petition um, relative to the marijuana sales issues was insufficient or not sufficient to use her language, uh, meaning that it did not meet the requirements uh, of state law. Specifically, she cited to the facts that she felt that there were administrative components and under the state law or the state constitution, all that can be initiated are um, legislative matters. Uh, and there's a case out of Aspen, that most recent case out of Aspen, there are others previous to it, that indicate that administrative action or administrative uh, decisions are not appropriate to initiate. In addition, the, the court or the hearing officer uh, found that the petition was insufficient because under CRS 1311, I believe it's 113, the circulators are required to file a petition at the time that the, um, uh, uh, the signatures are turned in, show, or something filed a file an affidavit at the time the petition is turned in, showing that they have, um, Receive paid circulators or paid signatures, paid for signatures, and what they the circulators have been paid. That's uh, the court or the hearing officer determined that that was not sufficiently filed, uh, and determined that the whole petition was insufficient because of that. Um, uh, based upon that, as I say, there's a hearing that is scheduled um, on uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, it would be anticipated that. We'll get some more direction from that. That's the basis for my request or suggesting this be terminated or be, be um, tabled. Uh, I would postpone it till the 13th of October. Um, as the board is aware, um, the if the petition is sufficient and if it can proceed forward or if the initiative ordinance are sufficient and can proceed forward, the board uh, is required to under uh, CRS section sign 3111104 is set forth in my resolution to refer that ordinance to the voters. That referral has to occur um, no later than 150 days after the determination of sufficiency, but cannot occur within 32 days of the general election. Um, that having been said, the um, that would allow the board to set this matter beginning um, I believe it's January 12th, and as late, or I'm sorry, uh, December 8th, and as late as January 12th. Um, if the board postpones this to October 13th, or to the October 13th meeting, that would mean that we'd have to, we could set it any time between G uh, December 15th and January 12th, so there'd still be ample time with the ability to get some direction. Um, again, as I said, my um, suggestion would be that the matter be tabled. I would 
provide some admonition to the board members that to the degree that um, this is in litigation, which it clearly is, that the board um, continue the board's general policy of simply not commenting on litigation. Um, that'd be my recommendation. Okay. All right then. Sounds like there's stuff to be worked out still. We don't, everything's kind of dead in the water here. With that being said, I think I'll entertain a motion to table right. item five. There you go. The next October 13th meeting until we hear some more information. I make a motion to per, uh, postpone till a date certain, uh, I guess the proposed ordinance concerning the regulation of retail and medical marijuana stores in the town of Wellington. And that date would be October 13th, 2021. I'll second. Uh, a roll call, please. I have a point of information. I believe your intention was October 13th of 2020. Is that correct? You uh, I think so. Yes, that would be what I meant to say. If I misstated the date, then I meant to say 2020. Thank you, Mr. Gator. Roll call. Trustee Gator. Yes. Trustee Jerome. Yes. Trustee Kenny. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Whitehouse. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson. Yes. Mayor Hammond. Yes. Okay. We're going to move on to item six. Brad. Same, I, same issues as we had for item five. I generally would apply to through item nine. Okay. I right. well, I'll spare you going through all that again. I'll spare you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Can I get a motion? Uh, same as before. Uh, to, you know, postpone proposed ordinance uh, concerning the retail sales of marijuana in the town of Wellington to um, October 13, 2020. Can we hear more? So moved. This is, this is concerning the retail marijuana sales tax, Mr. Mayor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Number six, right? Yes, but that's you said the retail marijuana sales. It's sales tax. Sales tax. Got it. Okay. I got one move. No, you, got, you, got, you better correct the motion. Okay. Let me correct the motion. I would like to uh, entertain a motion to uh, postpone or table the... Uh, uh, Item six, proposed ordinance uh, concerning the retail marijuana sales tax in the town of Wellington, Colorado to October 13, 2020. Hold my motion. Okay. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Gator. Yes. Trustee Jerome. Yes. Trustee Kenny. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Whitehouse. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson? Yes. Mayor Hammond? Yes. Okay, item seven. I don't think there's any reason to <laughs> ask Brad anymore. Can I get a motion to um, table resolution number 30 2020 resolution calling for a special election in the town of Wellington, Colorado until uh, we hear more and we'll look at it on October 13, 2020? So moved. Second. Roll call. Trustee Gator. Yes. Trustee Jerome. Yes. Trustee Kenny. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Trustee me. McDonald. Uh, yes. Trustee Whitehouse. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson? Yes. Mayor Hammond? Yes. Okay, on item eight, can I get a motion to uh, table resolution number 36 2020, a resolution referring a ballot question to uh, October 13, 2020? So moved. I'll second that. Roll call. Trustee Gator? Yes. Trustee Jerome? Yes. Yes. Trustee Kenny? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. 
Trustee Whitehouse? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson? Yes. Mayor Hammond? Yes. Item nine. Can I get a motion to table resolution number 31 2020, a resolution authorizing the town clerk to appoint election judges for a special election until we hear more information on October 13, 2020? So moved. I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Jerome? Yes. Trustee Gator? Yes. Trustee Kenny? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Trustee Whitehouse? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson? Yes. Mayor Hammond? Yes. Okay. Item 10, resolution number 35-2020. Resolution appointing the town treasurer, Brad. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is simply um, addressing the issue of, of putting a town treasurer in office. Um, Mr. Stexton was appointed as interim treasurer. The town has now uh, retained Judith Tippetts as the finance officer. It's, as the board is aware, it's a joint position, finance officer and treasurer. State statute requires that the town appoint a finance uh, or a town treasurer, and this would fill that position. Judith Tippetts. Board members, got any questions? I did have a question for Mr. March, or I don't know who would know the answer to this question, but could we get a review of the reasons behind having this as one combined position? Instead yes, of you certainly can. Positions? Um, historically, um, the uh, finance director position has been, the, the statute requires that the town appoint a town treasurer. Um, the finance director, by definition, has some um, responsibilities to the town administrator, particularly in um, preparing the budget. The reason, and this has sort of evolved over time, the reason that the um, town treasurer is appointed and the, and the finance director is appointed as the town treasurer, there have been concerns in the past that board members have voiced that the town treasurer could not be forthright with the board or could be um, terminated uh, by the board um, and, and was under the, sh the direction of the um, town administrator as the, what our empl employment code said is the town administrator has um, the ultimate hiring firing power of all employees with the exception of those statutory employees. There was a desire not to have or create a situation that the town administrator could terminate the, the finance director. And so what we did was we put both positions, we basically, the finance director holds the position of both finance director and town treasurer, and the termination of the finance director requires action by the town administrator and the town board that way. Um, it also allows the finance director um, without running contrary to the town administrator if there was some dispute uh, or some concern that the finance director felt should be bring, bringing to the board as the town treasurer, the finance uh, director's responsibility is to report to the board as well. And the board can get information from the finance director as, they, as he desires based on the position of town treasurer. It's a little complicated, but that's kind of the background. So it's a joint position. Okay, thank you very much for explaining that because I know I, have, for one, have expressed concerns about that uh, having it be a combined position in the past because of the fact that you do have that person reporting to both. I did not realize, as you mentioned, that also ultimately the town treasurer cannot be dismissed without the action of the board. So they are answerable to the board, not just the town administrator, correct? Correct, and, is, and, it, and it has a duty to report to the board if there are concerns as well, right. not just to the town administrator. Okay. That, that alleviates a lot of the concerns that I had. So thank you very much for explaining that. Yep. Anyone else? No other board members? Okay, public comment. Mr. Mayor, I see no hands raised at this time for comment. 
Okay, we'll bring it back to the board. Can I get a motion to approve resolution number 35-2020, a resolution appointing the town treasurer, Judith Tippett? So moved. No moved. Roll call. Do I need a second? I'll second. second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think we're having a little communication with the internet's kind of slow. Trustee Gator. Yes. Trustee Jerome. Yes. Trustee Kenny. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Whitehouse. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Knutson. Yes. Mayor Hammond. Yes. Okay. Yes, Miss Tippetts. Welcome to Wellington. We'll be in touch. All right, moving on to some reports. Town attorney, anything new? Nothing. No? No. Are you still there? I'm here. Nothing. I have nothing, hey, Mr. Mayor. You're going to go represent us good, aren't you? That's my goal. Well, represent us out there good, Brad. We'll do it. Thank you. All right. Town, town administrator. I just wanted to welcome uh, Judy Tippetts to our team. She previously came from the city of Gunnison and town of Assault, where she served as the chief financial officer and the assistant town administrator as well. So we're very excited to have you on team on our team and uh, get rolling with the budget and everything that we have going on right now. So thank you so much for being a part of us. Uh, and Tyler, thanks for holding down the fort as well. So much appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you for reminding us all of that, Tyler. You did a great job hanging in there, and I know you're still going to be here, and we'll look forward to hearing from Ms. Tippins. Uh Anything else from the staff? Tyler, you got anything you want to say? If I may, Kelly, do you want to jump in about the CARES funding? It's Judy. Feel free to um, jump in. I figure you would during uh, your report, so... Tyler's going to do the treasurer's report. Uh, he prepped it and I feel like he's the most familiar with it. But I do want to share, um, and this kind of came from the work session last week when we were um, reviewing um, some concerns that I heard from council on some of our citizens aren't doing so well with the, with the budget numbers as far as uh, their utility bills and being far behind. So we were reviewing some um, a, a CARES grant today and looking at the language, we have found $60,000 is available. And so we are kind of looking for a head nod from council to um, move forward in putting together a little bit of a hardship application, something super simple that would allow our residents to ask for funding for some of their utility. And so um, Tyler helped me with this is, we call it an aging report and it tells you how many of your um, customers, so these are utility customers. So we have 3,902 customers. At this point um, in time, we have 359 of them. So right at 9% of our customers are more than 60 days, are at 60 days behind. And if I look at those numbers, uh, 60 days, um, that's about $11,600 that we are behind on that. If you move into the 90 day category, that is an additional 3,400. And the category that's really kind of alarming is the ones that are more than 120 days. And that is $37,000 that they are behind on billing. So we would kind of like to get a head nod to move forward coming up with a application. Of course, the things that are concerning to me is I would like, um, these would have to be uh, the billing periods from March going forward. So certainly if you were behind, um, that you're, those monies would not qualify. The second piece, um, I don't think that we should necessarily um, disqualify somebody for applying for that just because they're current. That doesn't mean that they haven't been struggling. Um, they may have put it on a credit card. They may have pulled money out of savings. And so I'd like the application to be available to all of our utility users. Um, and then I would also like a, a part on the bottom of the application that would allow staff to go through and say, um, you know, what it, what's happened with this person in the last, in the 12 months prior to COVID, have they been delinquent on a regular basis or is this something that is 
very new to them and allow them just, you know, a very short paragraph that they could share with us the hardship that they're encountering. And with that $60,000, um, it, it would go a long, long way for our customers that have, um, you know, have called and have tried to make payment arrangements, but they're just not able to get caught up. And this would be something um, similar to what we're rolling out right now for our business and nonprofit assistant program. So um, we figured if we're hitting those angles of the community, let's also take a look at our residents. And this would be for utilities, plural. So not just our water fund. This could be, say you're struggling with Galegos or your power lighting, et cetera. So um, there could be other things that we could assist with. Um, and we figured up to $2,000 per um, uh, household, essentially, at that $60K amount, which we still do have from CARES funding available this year to be able to spend. So I think it, it aligns very nicely with what we're already attempting to doing with our business and, and nonprofit community. And Hallie, and, and we, did, we did reach out and we did get a, um, a confirmation from DOLA today, late afternoon. It was, it was you know, after four o'clock when we found out, but we definitely got a head nod that the funds could be used for utilities as long as we make sure it's plural. So we can't exclude electric, um, mm -hmm. but it would be a great way to reach our utility users. Um, we, we mail out to them every single month. I think that's a great idea. I've had several citizens who have approached me, especially in conjunction with the rate increases, that this has been a concern of theirs. So I think this would be a fantastic way for us to address both those past due. But I do also like the fact that let's keep in consideration that there may have been those that have made some pretty major sacrifices to stay current. So I think this is a great idea and I'd love to see it move forward. I would have to uh, concur with uh, Trustee Gator's comments. This is certainly something I, I've inquired about in the past. Uh, again, if, 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 is there any way we can help our residents? I think this sounds like a great idea, and I'm grateful that you folks had, had found the, uh, the possibility of utilizing some of this funding in this manner. So I'm, I'm fully supportive. Best news all day. I'm totally in favor of this and I'm so very excited that our residents can benefit from it. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, this is some news we've been all been kind of hoping we would hear. You know, we've been asking, you dove into it and you found it. So I like it a lot. I think it's great. Okay, stay tuned. We'll tweak it and find out what we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Ms. Tippins. Tyler? Do we need to go through all this? What's the, what's the highlights? Uh, yeah, we can just, we can go through it. If you guys have any questions, i um, happy to answer any, but um, just pretty much presented it every month, like, uh, like always, so. Yeah. Any question, board members? Did you see anything in here that was fishy? Uh, I, I had a, well, a comment. No, I didn't see anything that's fishy. I'm not expecting <laughs> to see anything that's fishy. I mean, what I was sort of struck by in general, it seems like revenues are running greater than anticipated and expenses seem to be running less than anticipated, which considering, I don't know if my general generalization is correct, but that's certainly a lot better than what we were looking at a few months ago. So you know, that seems encouraging. Okay, anyone else? I just wanted to clarify that with our water fund, am I reading this correctly, Mr. Sexton, that we are currently sitting at about, so I guess I'm a little bit confused on exactly, but I believe it's before you go into the non-operating revenues are just basis of in and out, we're at negative $1 million at this point. Is that correct? That would be based off budget. So um, we're okay. So and then the other number with the total $1 million loss based off. Sorry, one more time you cut out there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my internet's not working so well. But uh, what I was saying was the million is, you know, the budget. And then we will be anticipating the North Pooter share um, invoice. And that, that will uh, 
pretty much get us in line with what we expect to, to, and that should be roughly around, I believe next month we'll start seeing the bill. Okay. And, and out of curiosity, what do you, uh, I, I'm not sure what that number was. What, what's the projected number for our water costs? Uh, just uh, ballpark it. It's still going to be bad. Uh, it could be anywhere between 1.6 to 2 million. Just for a second, how far back does our um, historical billing record go with North Pooter? Like how, how far back do you have itemized billing records? Do you go back seven years on that or three? I have a, I have a folder um, because but you know our records go back. I think we switched to Cassell back in two thousand nine. But I have a file folder of all invoices for the last at least ten years of uh, detailed invoicing. Thank you. Yeah, we'll revisit that. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Tyler. Keep us informed on that North Pooter. Would you we like to be curious? Will do. All, Thanks, guys. We got radar on on that one. All right. Okay, that's good. Uh, anything from the board members? Want to bring anything up this time? I did have just a quick question, and I don't know um, if Mr. Gowling could speak quickly to this, or maybe we can have a report. But how are we looking with the water treatment plant? I know we've been kind of running all over the place all summer long. How are things looking at this point? Trustee Gator, this is Bob Gowling, Director of Public Works. I would say that uh, demand is starting to fall off a little bit, which is a good thing. Um, we've had some cooler weather that had a big impact, especially on outdoor water use. So, um, it's looking better than it did back in August. Okay, that is good to hear. Thank you very much. That's all I had. I wanted to say thank you for all the work on the greenhouse. Man, it looks good. Main Street looks better because of it. And I, I've been really um, enjoying watching that progress. So thanks for all the work over there. It looks great. Kind of a long time coming. That was uh, one of our equipment operators out there grading the yard out. Um, so thank you. Looks good. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you everybody for tonight's meeting. Uh, good stuff. Everybody's doing real well. Pretty pleased with a lot of things I heard tonight. We'll see, uh, see some of you in court tomorrow. And uh, not every day you get sued around here, so be proud. All right. I got 758. That being said, can I get a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a nice Bye. evening. See you, team. Next time. See you.